Hi, welcome to the special broadcast by the Federal. I'm Hari Shupadhyay. Ever since COVID vaccines have been rolled out, there is a huge question on whether cancer patients going through different levels of uh, therapy should take it. If they take it, when should they take it? All these questions are out there. Many of them have been uh, consulting their doctors. Many of them are worried. What should be the time that they take it? What should be the gap between two vaccines? To try and answer some of these questions, we thought we'd talk to the experts directly and find out. And today we are joined by Dr. Vishal Rao. He's an oncologist. He's the chief of head and neck surgical oncology at HCG. Welcome, Dr. Vishal. Also, he will answer a lot of questions today on what globally oncologists are suggesting to their patients and what are the kind of questions that uh, here patients here in Bangalore across India have been asking their doctors. Uh, Dr. Vishal, uh, over the last few weeks, ever since uh, vaccines are available to sections of the public, what is the kind of question or fear that you've seen amongst uh, patients? Um, uh, to start with, Harish, I would say that we health workers ourselves had our own set of hesitations. Uh, yes. And I was one among them, so I could uh, fairly with confidence um, uh, confess and admit that we've all gone through one set of our own hesitations, which we have overcome through knowledge and uh, through research and publications that have happening all through the last couple of weeks. There's been a lot of interest in digging evidence on understanding how well the vaccines are working, which vaccines to choose. Uh, I have certain comorbidities, certain special conditions. Am I eligible for the vaccine? These are some of the questions that keep cropping up. So in the last couple of months, we've actually gone through a lot of evidence digging on which vaccines would be most appropriate. What is the current uh, status of regulatory as well as evidence from published literature? Two. In fact, uh one aspect that one um, notices or rather every time you talk about a cancer survivor or someone who is going through a therapy uh, is the immune system it's uh, it's not in the ideal state as such so what is the advice that uh, doctors oncologists across the world or here in india have been uh, giving to their patients on when should they ideally take this vaccine and also what should be the gap uh, what are the kind of uh, concerns that are being addressed? You know, uh, we've had some internal consensus meeting at HCG between our oncologists to discuss this matter. And uh, I've been uh, serving as the Dean of Academics now for research and collaborations. And I've been working to uh, collate views across uh, the board of all our 23 centers, trying to put together evidence. And LGVS has been our research partner in this uh, COVID pandemic through the Lancet uh, uh, COVID Resource Center. They've been giving us um, uh, collated data from across the globe, trying to bring together evidence. And what we are seeing here is there are three phrases to, uh, to the cancer-related uh, aspect of the pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. and the aspect of delayed diagnosis and, uh, and the aspect of treatments of patients who are ongoing treatments and the aspects of patients who are survivors and who have completed treatments. Now, the, those group of patients who had delayed diagnosis and have now been diagnosed are asking us, uh, there's a group of patients who are ongoing cancer treatments and there are a group of patients who have completed recent therapies. Yes. All three categories uh, need to be, uh, need to be uh, effectively addressed with regarding to the pandemic. There are a couple of key important considerations here. Number one, what I've been talking about to all our patients is cancer is a very important key comorbidity. Naturally, cancer patients have a fragile immune system. So the first question comes is, are we eligible for the vaccines? And the answer is yes, you should take the vaccines because cancer is one of the known comorbidities. The second question that comes to them is, um, uh, is it safe for us? And the answer is yes, from global clinical trials published now. And I think the latest Lancet report by YC et al., uh, which was published from the four randomized control trials from UK, Brazil, South Africa, clearly shows uh, safety as well as efficacy is promising for COVID shield. And similarly, we've got now data coming in for COVAXIN in, co in India. So with this, uh, the second answer is yes, it is safe and cancer patients should get vaccinated. 
then comes the third question i am currently in the phase of just being diagnosed my treatment starts in a couple of weeks should i take the vaccine before it starts and i think uh, uh, to this group of patients we have been encouraging them and and again it's an individual oncologist opinion but primary therapies in oncology may be related to chemotherapy radiotherapy surgery or uh, a transplant like a bone marrow transplant or yes. immunotherapy all of them need to be individually catered to based on their individual conditions but nonetheless largely what we believe and we are recommending is that vaccination is safe and patients can go ahead with it without any trouble before starting their treatments to the sub second subset that is patients who are already ongoing therapy and you know cancer therapies can be prolonged for sometimes yes. months uh, yes. even in these patients there have been oncologists who are making wise choices to say that in the interim period between two therapies when they have a safe period when the immune system is um, uh, rather in a stabilized condition they would actually consider giving them vaccinations because they believe that through the protracted therapies of cancer sometimes they will be vulnerable and this is also something that uh, the uk joint committee of oncologists and experts have been discussing to say that if if there are protracted periods of delay you may keep cancer patients vulnerable and that's why it's very very crucial for us to address that patients who are on protracted or long therapies would be advised by the oncologist to consider vaccination because what we need to understand is that before the second wave hits in we need to protect our cancer patients who are vulnerable for uh, covid-19 and for the morbidities and complications of the severe covid illness and to the last group of patients that is patients who have completed therapies mm. i think that's a place where we would want to have the least amount of controversies to say that all of us would concur to view saying that you should go ahead with the vaccination and protect yourself absolutely uh, in fact uh, there's a research since you mentioned about a second wave and you know ensuring that everyone with a comorbidity gets the jab both of them uh this is research that's just come out the details of which have just come out from uk it it talks about the first dose that's given to uh, people who are going through a therapy with cancer uh, patients and the kind of uh, t cells or antibodies that have been seen in comparison to others well they're saying 39% is the antibodies that has been seen in uh, people who are having solid cancer 13% in people who are having uh, blood cancer and 97% in uh, patients who did not have any cancer so looks like the first dose hasn't been as effective as uh, it is on a normal individual without any of these comorbidities so many of them in the uk now are suggesting that it's time that the government in uk which is saying that let the period between the first and second dose be 12 weeks be reduced for uh, cancer patients to ensure that their antibody levels are Uh, more and it's on par with the other individuals so how should india look at it now because we are not even considering people under 45 uh, cancer patients under 45 for uh, vaccination so how should india look at this whole aspect right now harish this is a very relevant point you brought about and i would like to place some uh, very uh, important clarity here the regime that we are all following in vaccination is called the prime boost regime that means the first hmm. dose dose and the second dose is the booster dose typically all the studies across have shown that the antibodies whether it's a neutralizing antibody or the igg antibodies have been classically developed after 15 days to 20 days from the time of the second booster dose now it's very crucial for us to understand that two weeks after the completion of the booster dose you are going to get your antibodies so measuring the priming antibodies um, initially after the first priming dose would would not be very useful and that's for mm-hmm. viewers to understand that do not get worried the priming dose is different and the booster dose is different the second aspect uh, here which you alluded to about the gap between the priming dose and the boosting dose now this yes. came out because the who had some very interesting recommendation when the sage group which is the expert mm-hmm. group within the who actually recommended based on some detailed analysis that they did where they found out that when they incidentally looked at the group of people who had delayed the second booster dose after 4 weeks so they divided it into three groups they divided it into groups of people who took it within a month to people who took it between 1 to 2 months and people who took it after 3 months and they found that 
the subsegment of people who took it after three months had a very good response. That is after twelve mm. weeks. So mm. that's mm. where they went to kind of give a, a recommendation, or I would say a suggestion to say that delaying the dose could also make it more effective, and that kind of has. Opened up a, a a broader debate among the scientific community, which has had its own set of differences for two reasons, which which we all need to know. Number one is, this data that the Sage group from the WHO recommended comes out from a small subset analysis of about 16 to 15 percent group of people. It's hmm. not what was designed for in the clinical uh, study. So yes. taking and deciphering such an important conclusion out of a small percentage of patients. while is something for us to kind of discuss and debate uh, i would hold back our reservations on trying to change complete recommendations on that because especially in cancer this would keep our patients very vulnerable over the protracted period of that therapy so currently what we are following in india as per the government of india's uh, guidelines is to maintain the prime boost regime to 4 weeks only which is uh, to keep it lower because the more gap you give the higher the compliance a uh, failure so it's very important yes. that we comply with it and that's why we are keeping the boost prime boost regime still at 4 weeks uh, as per the committee's recommendation and government of india's guidelines okay well uh, i think these were some of the questions that um, cancer patients their relatives and others wanted to know uh, as you rightly said uh, we know still we know very little about this uh, uh, disease or even the vaccination and how it will pan out so hopefully more data will come out dr vishal rao thanks a lot for talking to us thank you thank you well do tune in to federal social media handles we'll keep getting you more updates and also some insightful discussions thank you